Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today, in headlines around the world, we have been hearing about Mahmoud Abbas's outlandish accusations against Israel and war crimes at the United Nations. And of course, Prime Minister Netanyahu has vowed to go and be a voice for the people of Israel. But in a very ironic article by the Haaretz, the Land of Israel newspaper, they blasted the Prime Minister, not believing not one moment that he will really stand for the people of Israel, but say that he has moved backwards and forwards, changing his opinion from morning to evening. It's rather sad to see the Prime Minister in such an awkward position, but no doubt the world pressure that has been upon him has caused this very reaction to be a part of his daily life. The pressures that he faces with world leaders, rather than consulting the God of Israel, the very God that brought us home in the first place to deliver us from the hands of our enemies. In another case that I thought was kind of interesting in Israel's national news, there was an article reported European leaders speak out against increasing anti-Semitism. The article goes on to say that the French Prime Minister, Manuel Valls, visited the Great Synagogue in Paris just before Rosh Hashanah and declared denying the existence of Israel is the first step towards anti-Semitism. Well, that's kind of interesting. All the Arab world denies the existence of Israel. In fact, the Vatican itself refused to accept the acknowledgement of the Israel state nearly 40 years after its inception. And only recently, for political purposes, has even remotely considered that possibility, but refusing to call Israel a state, is the Israeli state of Israel, rather referring to Israel as the Holy Land or the Promised Land. Again, as the French Prime Minister stated, it is just the beginning or the first step of anti-Semitism. Take a look to also today, as we were earlier in Košice, Slovakia, at a statue, one of the many monuments and images that have been placed across Europe as the Vatican has gained control, the Roman Empire reestablished. Even Ben Danun with Israeli News Live, here live in Košice, Slovakia. In behind me is a statue, an image, made into Pope John Paul II. For those that may not be aware of the history of the Soviet Union or the former Soviet Union, that this country here, along with the Czech Republic at one time, were one nation. Czech and Slovaks were one nation. And of course, Poland and the other Eastern Bloc uh, nations were part of the Soviet Union. But Pope John Paul II, along with a secret coalition with the United States, then President Ronald Reagan, caused the Soviet Union to be broken up and separated from Russia, something I'm sure that the Russians are still not quite happy with. But nonetheless, in the process of time, the Roman Empire has slowly but surely revived and is taking back over the very lands that it once conquered before during the Inquisition. And in the wake of its conquering of these European nations, everywhere it goes, they place their image, their mark, showing that they do have conquering powers over these nations. The Slovaks were quick to join the European Union when this all came about. However, the Czechs were a little bit more reluctant, but finally did join the European Union, but did not accept the monetary system of the day. Nonetheless, we see in every country in Europe, statues such as this of the Pope of Rome or former popes in commemoration to their loyalty to the Roman Catholic Church. I'm Stephen Bendenun reporting to you live from Košice, Slovakia. In other news, there was a terrorist who nabbed near Gaza, a man who wielding a knife came across, uh, was caught by the IDF forces, and they said he was not there to peel carrots. Uh, also, the Israel has formed for the first time a mixed gender battalion. That ought to be something interesting to see how that goes. But 
It is one thing for sure, the Israelis do believe in fighting together side by side, and it's been one of the, probably one of the greatest achievements of Israel's victories. It's the fact that they have not looked down upon women as a lesser, lesser being. Instead, they have exalted them to an equal status, which is what God intended in the first place. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun with Israeli News Live.